in 1912. And you might think that another FA Cup triumph is no more than a wild and romantic dream. But manager Alan Clark believes his boys could be on the threshold of great things. I'm very excited at the moment, John. I've got probably the youngest side in the country. And uh, they're starting now to express themselves. They're most certainly entertaining. They're most certainly trying to play football. And uh, as I say, they're exciting me. And I think that all the people who are watching us are appreciating the entertainment that we're giving. You're playing Carnarvon Town this weekend. Would you rather have been playing a side that was a known quantity? Uh, well, I think people know what I feel about uh, non-league clubs in the FA Cup. But uh, that's what I believe. That is my opinion. Because uh, never mind what people say, um, I am a professional football manager. And I know over the years that uh, by a manager dropping a clanger, by losing to an non-league club, through silly directors, it's cost him his job. But Alan, just to pursue it one little bit further, when Barnsley played Tottenham Hotspur this season, you were the little club against the big club. Now, do your supporters love that? We were professional. It's, it's my living, it's my livelihood, it's my players' livelihoods. We're playing Carnarvon on Saturday, and they're going to make it as difficult as possible for us. And they will run, and they'll harass, and they will chase, and they will kick. But if they lose, they can go back to their jobs on a Monday morning. My lads have got to come back here. We've got to try and pick ourselves up, if that did happen. And these are the players who give Alan Clark the willies. His view is a controversial one, and few people will agree with him, especially someone like Carnarvon's manager, John King. Well, everybody's obviously entitled to the, their own opinion, but I've always thought, I mean, I've been manager of a league club, as you know, for, for, for a number of years. And uh, I think that it would take a, a lot of the magic of the FA Cup because, I mean, it would virtually be another League Cup. It's the, I mean, look at my little club, Carnarvon. I mean, look what they've been doing. And, and it, it stretches everybody's imagination. And it is, it's like a fairy tale and people want it, the public wants it. And look at the, look over the years, the, the, the excitement that it's brought to clubs, big clubs, small clubs. Oh, no, no, it, everybody must, uh, must have, a, have a little feel of this one. As always, the cup run has produced a hero. In Carnarvon's case, a man who works on the railways, Austin Salmon. So what does this now mean to you? You've scored in the first round of the cup, the second round of the cup. Yeah. I mean, this has got to be great stuff, eh? Yeah, it's... I know probably only once in a lifetime, thing, you know, I think, I know, probably never happen again. And, uh, like, at York, when it all happened there, I just couldn't believe it, you know. I think about three or four days later before I realised what had happen actually happened, you know, so... You can't, can't really explain it, you know, the sort of feeling that we feel like. It's brilliant. What are these lads like to, to play with? Fantastic. Best lads, best team I've ever, ever got into. I think that's our strength, not because we're good players. Just our strength is that we're really close, you know, and we get... Barnsley. Greatest day in the history of the multi-part league team Carnarvon. They've already beaten Stockport County and York City, and now they face the second division side Barnsley. And Barnsley's manager, Alan Clark, was rash enough, maybe, to suggest that non-league sides shouldn't be allowed into the competition. Well, would Carnarvon make him pay for that? Here's Peter Brackley. Carnarvon Town, the pride of North Wales, but there are more Scousers and Welshmen in the side. Only fullbacks Glyn Griffith and Robin Jones are Welsh. Most of the others have been recruited from the Merseyside area, where manager Johnny King has made his name. In midfield, Bobby Tynan's one, you might recall. He was with Tranmere and Blackpool. And Barnsley will be fully aware, I'm sure, of the goal-scoring exploits of Austin Salmon and Steve Craven. Twelve FA Cup goals between them. Well, it threatens to be quite an ordeal for Barnsley, and they'll look to the experience of central defenders Larry May and Paul Futcher to steady them here. They're still without club captain Joe Joyce at fullback. Stuart Gray, once of Nottingham Forest, is leading the side now for midfield. And up front, teenagers Mick Clark and Ian Chandler have come in and fared well in recent matches. They'll be alongside John McDonald up front, the former Glasgow Rangers striker, signed in November. So let's pick up the game then in the first half. Barnsley, they are the team in the red shirts and white shorts. May. Useful pass to Cross. Another of the youngsters in this Barnsley side. The header down, just touch wide then. Stuart Gray got his header in well. And Hughes just 
managing to tip it away. Useful cross then by Cross. There's Gray with the header. And Hughes couldn't hold on to it. McDonald. Across it, trying to find Thomas. And he arrived well then. Quint Thomas spotting the potential danger then. The cross was from McDonald, and you can see Thomas arriving there at the far post. And in fact, came back off the defender. Cross, beaten though by Woods. Craven has pulled away to the right. Salmon's in the middle. Butcher, who got it clear, finding Thomas. Now Hardy works in midfield. Now McDonald. Played by Robin Jones, and now here's Salmon. To Craven. The first real opening that Carnarvon have created, and Steve Craven was the man they'd have chosen to have on the end of it. Got seven goals in the FA Cup. It was a strong and brave run, first of all, by Robin Jones. And then Salmon. Setting Craven up, although he couldn't keep the, the shot down. He wasn't that far away. We're now into time, headed on for stoppages. As Barnsley win a free kick, surely now in the dying seconds of the half. Agnew will take the kick. Harry May has come up again. May arriving. He's clearly the man who poses the threat on the set pieces. And he met the header very firmly. Just over the bar. Agnew again, fighting the free kick well. Watch for May coming in. He climbs the highest and over the bar. Now Salmon trying to use his strength to power him through. Now let's see what Carnarvon can produce here. They were working somewhat strenuously on these set pieces this morning. Barnsley organised their defensive ranks. Martin Dale with the free kick. Oof, very nearly caused a problem there. Butcher in the end, having to head it away for a corner. Clive Baker seemed in two minds. The Barnsley goalkeeper as Martin Dale floated it across. Let's play the player coming in. That was Wilson. Barnsley survived that. And here's Salmon. Easily cut out though by May. This is Chandler. Now Futcher. McDonald. And the free kick is given. In a potentially dangerous situation. Found it on McDonald. That's how Carnarvon are preparing then to defend this free kick. Agnew and Gray organising the free kick. Agnew with the shot, beaten away. Martin Dell eventually clearing. But Hughes having to fist away the free kick, turned in by Agnew. You can see the free kick again. Well struck by Agnew. of Carnarvon, Roger Greenwood was at the game. From top throughout the game but they couldn't turn their possession football and dominance into goals. For the players, the crowd of more than 8,500, and for manager Alan Clark, a frustrating goalless first half. But the breakthrough when it came in the 141st minute of this tie was sweet. Skipper Stuart Gray put Mick Clark through, his cross turned in by Roger Wilde, playing only his fourth game of the season for the Reds. Alan Clark 
a contented manager. Disciplined, we showed a lot of patience, and uh, we could have had, you know, more than, than one goal to show for our efforts tonight. It was a marvellous effort from, from Gwyn, wasn't it? Tremendous. Uh, I thought it actually hit the post first time and uh, came out right, but apparently the keeper pushed it onto the post, and uh, from that respect, he's uh, obviously made a great save. That's it, you've now got older shot in the fourth round. What are yeah, the prospects we're, there? We're looking forward to it. As I say, um, we only, you know, look at sort of take one match at a time, and obviously we're delighted to be playing older shot, and uh, my young team will uh, be looking forward to playing them on Saturday. The players, though, still talking about Roger Wilde's winner. It was a very important goal, and I think, to be honest, the lads breathe a sigh of relief because the longer the game was going on, I think they were more worried that they might sneak a winner. It's a typical Roger Wilde goal. That it's, that's Roger's strength in the six-yard box. He's not played a lot of many games this season. He's had a, he's a bad injury, and he's come back in today, and he's, he's popped the winner in. Barnsley had a healthy respect for Carnarvon and refused to allow them to settle. Consequently, they dominated the game and played some neat approach football. Dobbin created an opening here, but his cross was well cleared under pressure. Barnsley are playing with a lot of confidence these days. A lovely left wing cross, nodded on again by Dobbin, finds fullback Hedworth unattended. His lob hits the bar, and Clark's 10 yard effort is brilliantly cleared by Wilson off the line. Carnarvon's raids were collector's items, but also dangerous. This cross would have been a beauty had there been anyone there to receive it. But the 8,000 crowd were impressed by Carnarvon's determination and skill. Here's their best effort coming up. Lovely control to set up half a chance for Austin Salmon and bad luck at the far post. A bad mistake by Williams from Agnew's free kick gave Barnsley their best chance just before half-time. Gray missing a sitter. But early in the second half, Barnes is scored, and this takes some beating. Gray finds Clark down the left. Clark's cross is absolutely perfect for this finish by Roger Wilde, a gem of a goal. And don't worry, Roger, it definitely is in. A lot of people have been impressed by Carnarvon keeper Hughes, and this is why another fine save coming up. But there was no way through Barnes's defence last night, and a good example of that coming up as well. Craven, a very skillful player, tried everything here, but it's Roger Wilde who comes in with the tackle. 